Hi, I'm Marek Reichman, Chief Creative Officer for Aston Martin, and this is the all-new Aston Martin Valhalla. You'll always know the face of a Valhalla is an Aston Martin because of what I would call the S curvature and the shape and the form of our traditional drill, the grill that you would see on the front mid-engine cars. This is the S curvature and it really defines the face of an Aston Martin. Also, in addition to that, these horizontal grill veins. So we've had a drill at the face of our Aston Martins since the early 50s, and that's such an important factor of what makes an Aston Martin. Also the proportion, that one-third to two-third proportionality of the grille. I think when you look at Valhalla as a mid-engine layout versus the challenge of a front mid-engine layout, obviously completely different proportionality. You haven't got the engine sitting at the front midships. The engine is very much behind the occupants in the rear. The challenge of proportion is therefore a little bit reversed, but it's still looking at a one-third to two-third proportionality. In this instance, it's the length of the cabin in reverse versus the forward part of the car. So one-third to two-thirds forward. But all over the car, you will see that proportional relationship. Is this more about functionality when you look at a mid-engine layout? And as a for instance, exiting air from the front fender, so important. And here you, th you see through the door into this form that the traditional side strake is interpreted slightly differently because it's exiting air. There's a gap through here to take high pressure air off the front of the car. But that's really important visual language for Aston Martin. So in terms of the complexity of design, proportion still important, one third to two third gives you the golden section. It's evident all over the, the bodywork of Valhalla. Obviously, Valhalla is a mid-engine layout, so just like a Formula One car where the engine sits behind the driver. Exactly the same theory here. In fact, you're even seeing this in F1 green. The air scoop's really important. And if you look at a Formula One car above the driver's head, you have three channels of air distribution. So what we call clean air and dirty air. So this is the clean air section, which is used for breathing the engine. So that's the air that's coming in to breathe the turbochargers. And then the outboard scoops, part of that trio, are where we have dirty air. And the dirty air is the air affected by the boundary layer as it crosses the roof of the car in this instance. How do you make it look good? It's really a balance of how much air is needed to cool and breathe the engine, then really applying the, the proportion of golden section to reduce the size, so that the height versus the width and the same at the outboard edge as well. So it's about making function beautiful. I think if we come to the back of Valhalla, there's always a challenge when it comes to the aerodynamics at the back of a hypercar. Obviously, you've got the exhaust system, which here sits high up. That exhaust air is actually attracting the cooler air and pulling it over the wing, which means you're able to reduce the height of the rear wing because of the hot air over the top. This area here is very important. This is a deploying wing through this section, but actually you're effectively having a double wing at the back, which means you can reduce the height. And more importantly, at the back of the car, the quicker you can exit the air through these turbulent air areas, so the diffused area, the quicker the air rushes out and the more ground effect you have. So very important part of Valhalla at the back, these very, very big Air, air turbines effectively that suck the air out and then obviously the mesh here to extract the air so you don't get a high pressure buildup. 